Global, leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Well, thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Yesterday, UKIP's National Executive Committee unanimously voted to ask Henry Bolton to stand down as leader of UKIP. And today, he responded to them, making a short statement on the seafront outside the Grand Hotel in Folkestone. Here's what Henry Bolton said. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, the UKIP National Executive, Executive Committee decided to initiate and embark upon a constitutional course to remove me as leader of the party. I did advise at yesterday's meeting, I advised the NEC, not to expose the party to the financial and political cost of that course of action. And that includes the political cost of possibly yet another leadership contest. I shall respect the next steps in the constitutional process and will therefore not be resigning as party leader. I shall repeat, I will not be re resigning as party leader. Now, without reflecting at all on its individual members, the NEC, as presently constituted, is unfit for purpose and has severely handicapped the party's progress and political de delivery for some years, as recent UKIP leaders can attest. It has not only lost the confidence of me as the party leader in its ability to act objectively as the party's governing body, it has also lost the confidence of a large proportion of the party's membership. The NEC does require significant and urgent reform. To that end, again, during the coming weeks, I shall be proposing a new party constitution with a newly constituted and reformed National Executive Committee. Well, joining me here on LBC for his first interview exclusively is Henry Bolton, the leader of UKIP. Good evening, Henry. Good evening, Nigel. Good evening. Close colleague who I've worked with for years in UKIP said to me that in a short space of time, you, Henry Bolton, have turned this into a soap opera and in doing so have brought the party into disrepute. I wouldn't agree with that, Nigel. I, um, it, the inter interestingly, at the NEC meeting yesterday, uh, there wasn't one charge uh, laid against me apart from uh, the, 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 the biggest charge and the most clearest, uh, the, the, the only allegation was that I had left my wife. Um, and apart from that, that no other specific uh, charge was, uh, was levelled against me. Uh, what about so, the issue, Henry? What about the issue that Joe Marnie, um, the woman that you've been with for the last few weeks, 25-year-old uh, from Kent as well, you know, did, it was revealed, send out a series of racist, very unpleasant messages about Meghan Markle. You, in, in, in the wake of that, you condemn what she'd said and done. Does she now deserve a second chance? No, I, I don't think she does in that respect. I mean, uh, and she has, in fact, uh, written a statement of apology, both a public one and, and one to the members of the party, and she has uh, voluntarily resigned from the party to avoid the party embarrassment. And, uh, frankly, as far as she's concerned, I, I think there's little little more that she can do, and, uh, indeed, the party should, should move on. I was not responsible for those comments, of course. I've never written such comments, and I, as you say, I've, uh, I've, I've roundly criticised them as abhorrent on, on the national media. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, we should be able to move, uh, move on from that now. The confusion, Henry, comes in that in the wake of those texts and tweets being revealed, you said that you'd broken up with her. And yet, a day later, in an interview with the Daily Telegraph, you said that you still love her and you wish to support her through a difficult time. And then the next evening, you're seen together having dinner in the National Liberal Club, according to some accounts holding hands, and she comes back home to Folkestone with you. So what is going on? I mean, is the relationship <laughs> off? Is it, I'm very confused, Henry, and I know that many in UKIP, many in UKIP thought that it was the height of stupidity, uh, given what was going on, and given you said you'd broken up, to be photographed at dinner in London with her. No, I, I understand that. Uh, Nigel, the, um, the t there were a number of things that came together on that day. One was that we made public and passed to the chairman of the party certain information that, uh, r that proves that there were people within the party who have worked directly against the interests of the party and myself as leader. Um, and and, and that, that information relates to uh, uh, the texts that uh, became public, uh, some of which we have proof now were actually doctored. Um, you, you're saying, some of that evidence you, you, came... Uh, sorry, Henry, you are saying 
that these racist tweets that we saw published in our newspapers had actually been amended and doctored. We, we have proof that at least proof that at least one was. Okay. And indeed, the, uh, the source of, of some of those texts has actually mm. uh, said to national media that uh, he would never have released them uh, if had he known that they would be used to damage the party. No, but the problem is, and, Henry, that, uh, but, but Henry, the problem is they still exist. The, but the question I'm asking you here is you said you'd broken up with her and then you're holding hands, having dinner at the National Liberal Club. She then the, gets on a train with you back to Folkestone and comes to your house. I'm asking a question. Is the relationship yes, uh, on or off? The, there is. We are still in contact nigel um, right. absolutely and I've, I've i've admitted this on national media we're still in contact of course there are strong emotions there but um we we both need to uh, sort our own private lives out so the the romantic side of the relationship is off uh, certainly at the moment and uh, going forward you know who knows what the future holds but at the moment she's got a lot to sort out in her life as have i and uh, whilst she did come back to folkestone to my house uh, then she actually uh, did so to pick up bags and, uh, you know, I had to take the, the, the measure of uh, actually publishing uh, taxi uh, logs to prove that 20 minutes afterwards, uh, she then returned to her, her home address. Yeah, and it's getting into this level of being a little bit yeah. cringe-making, isn't it? And that's why, Henry, yeah. that's why I think, above all, you have lost the confidence of a National Executive Committee who voted unanimously for you to go. Now, you've decided, you've made it very clear <coughs> on the seafront at Folkestone today that you're staying on. Why? Absolutely. Because I, I, I just simply do not believe that the party can go through a national leadership contest again, both financially and, and politically. Uh, the, uh, the, the fact is that the National Executive Committee has allowed for a very long time now factionalization within the party. It has fa failed to deal with disciplinary uh, issues that have arisen um, in a timely manner, and that's allowed uh, different uh, factions to emerge and indeed branch Branches to, to break down. The, uh, had the National Executive Committee actually governed the party correctly, then I believe we wouldn't be in this position in the first place. So uh, I'm, sta I'm staying on for the reasons of sorting all of that out. The National Executive Committee does need reform. It has lost the confidence of the, the broader party or a big, big section of it. Uh, and what we need to do now is consolidate the party to make it a good platform, a solid platform from which to pr project the party into the debate on leaving the European Union. Uh, that is the crucial issue here. And indeed, you know, the, the, my private life should be taking, uh, whilst of interest, of course, and I fully acknowledge that, should be taking, a, 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 you know, a, 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 should be a sideshow to what we are actually about, which is actually delivering an independent Britain post-Brexit. I mean, I've been a fierce critic of the NEC over the last few years, and I think there are problems with it. Uh, but on top of that, uh, we learned that yesterday and today, 16 party spokesmen have resigned their posts. Members say they're leaving. Uh, and I just wonder, do you think to yourself for a second that perhaps pushing the party on to the agony of an EGM, which will be a global soap opera, I guess, because everyone's going to want to see what happens, is this not perhaps just a little bit selfish? No, I, I, to be honest, Nigel, um, the last thing I need personally is to go through all this. I'm doing it because I believe it's in the interests of, of, of the party and, and the nation. And indeed, these resignations don't help anything. Um, if, if the people resigning had uh, any interest in the interests of the party, then they would actually be continuing their job. If they want to call for my resignation, that would be one thing. But actually, the functioning of the party should be taking precedent over anything else. So they should be continuing in their roles. Their, 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 uh, their resignations achieve nothing in that respect. So um, I, you know, I, I, I would urge everybody in the, in the party to, to stay calm, uh, let this play out, diver uh, form their own opinions about uh, the, the, the new constitution or proposal that I will put, put to the party. And, so you are, uh, and we so you are Henry, I, I want to get this absolutely right. Mm. Are you suggesting that you will draft and present a new constitution for the party in the next, well, four weeks is the, is, is the limit between now and the EGM, isn't yeah. it? Uh, I, I, am, I am, Nigel, yes. There are and two things that need to happen. We need yep. to reform the party, and that, that requires an, a, a new constitution. We need to reform the NEC, which again comes out of the constitution, and we need to do all of that so that we can actually move efficiently as a party to provide a, to build a, a solid base for the projection of our, our debate in terms of, of independence from the European Union. OK, and that will be the substance of that EGM meeting, dramatic as it promises to be. Now, Henry, I know that you've 
been in the army, you've been to Afghanistan, and you've been in the police, and you got an award in the police, and I used to see you on the Eurostar going to Brussels to advise them on how to deal with international terrorism, and you got an OBE for that. But right now, having never done it before, you're at the centre of this media storm. You've gone from being almost unknown to being one of the most recognisable people in Britain <laughs> walking down the street. How are you coping <laughs> being in the middle, living through something like this? Well, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Nigel. But uh, the occasional whiskey does help. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, you know, there are lots of things that before I'd done them, I'd never done before, um, and indeed, yep. uh, this is one of them. I, you know, it's a, a steep learning curve. Uh, but I, in some ways, you know, I'm actually quite enjoying uh, enjoying navigating through all this. The media attention. Um, <laughs> the media well, attention it takes is all sometimes... sorts. It, it, I mean, if you're it's enjoying it, it, Henry. That's quite something. <laughs> it really is. And and, but, uh, and, and Henry, yeah. you know, I. At the moment, the argument is Bolton's a goner, um, he's lost support, all these public figures are disappearing from him, but we'll find out from the active membership that turn up on that day. Let me exactly. ask you, what does Henry Bolton do if it all goes wrong next month? Oh, uh, you know, across that bridge when I come to it. I mean, I'm still going to be uh, campaigning solidly uh, for, for, for independence from the European Union in all areas of government and administration. I think that's absolutely crucial. Uh, I'm not going to go away in that respect. Uh, no way, no form. Um, but on something you just said, Nigel, yeah. you know, you know the, the NEC, uh, 14 people, are voting uh, against me, uh, yet 4,000 people elected me. And um, I question the right of four, uh, 14 people to overturn that 4,000 vote. Well, so we will take it to the membership. Y you will um, have your day, Henry. You will have your day. The, that EGM is going to happen. And I thank you very much indeed for joining us here exclusively on LBC. Well, that was Henry Bolton, leader of UKIP. In a moment, I will interview Margot Parker, who, until I heard the early morning news, was the deputy leader of UKIP. But for now, you're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC, and it's 7.15. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. Well, you've heard from Henry Bolton. He doesn't care what the NEC says. He doesn't care what 16 of his resigning spokesmen and women have said. He is going to see this through to an extraordinary general meeting. Well, to get the other side of the argument, I'm joined by East Midlands MEP Margot Parker. And Margot, last week when we met um, in Strasbourg, you were deputy leader of UKIP, weren't you? I was. I absolutely was. So isn't this an act of terrible personal disloyalty to Henry for you to have announced overnight that you're joining the rats deserting a sinking ship? No, not at all. Uh, to be quite frank, I mean, I thought about this, and it was with a heavy heart that I did resign. But I did so, and I will take exception to Henry speaking about disloyalty. It's outrageous. We have been loyally in the party, foot soldiers and all, working with everybody for years before Henry even knew UKIP existed. So he can forget that one. That's not... Right. Uh, so, frankly, no, he became the story. It got too much. Um, we couldn't really communicate with Henry. We were desperate to get hold of him, you know, to speak about issues which we knew were vitally important, and we couldn't get hold of the guy. Well, OK, he was in a, a storm uh, of this relationship. We did meet him after Christmas and said, look, we don't want to discuss your private life. We know it's, you know, it's... It's pretty terrible, but quite frankly, there's some pretty obnoxious things going on here. So let's just focus on doing the job. And that's genuinely what I thought, naively possibly, would happen. But, Margot, tell me, what has he actually done wrong? Well, I think, to be honest, his judgment has been extremely flawed. He's taken his eye off the ball. OK, you know, he, he's done what he's done. But Really, he should have focused entirely on doing the job. He was only elected a few months ago. Um, you know, those people that voted for him. And once he was elected, people really gathered around him to give him an immense amount of support. You know, we were all very, very loyal. Come on, Henry, let's get this job done. Let's get on and do a proper job. So the loyalty was there. His, I mean, it's almost like self-flagellation, really. These constant reports in the paper. And I think it was last Thursday, I read the Telegraph, and I thought, hmm. oh, gosh, this is going to be a you know, good old tough interview. 
well, I could have cried on the train coming back from Strasbourg having read that because I thought, no, why are you saying this? Please don't concentrate on the personal stuff. Just do the politics. Do you think he's brought the party into disrepute? Well, he hasn't helped us, for sure. I mean, it's a pretty pretty wacky uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Um, so, no, it, it, it's not the smartest thing. He hasn't behaved very well. OK, he's, he's taken his eye off the ball. He's okay. made a mistake. So, let's assume he takes your advice, Margot, and that of yeah. many other spokesmen and women, and, of course, the unanimous vote of the NEC. Let's say he takes your advice and he goes. Yeah. He... He, who next? I mean, who follows him, in your opinion? Because the one problem that UKIP's going to have yeah. is if it elects another leader who yeah. has no national profile, how yeah. on earth do they get known? And you could argue that maybe it's not all for good reasons, but Henry mm. does now have a profile. Uh, yes, he does have a profile. It, it's not one I would be particularly thrilled about. Um, to be honest, I don't know. Maybe we need some blue sky thinking here uh, with UKIP, the executive, perhaps those people that truly have supported the party and, you know, believe in it, believe in what it's done, what it continues to do. Um, and just maybe we could have a, an executive group that could do something that would be void of wretched infighting and stupidity, well, which is very embarrassing. There are really. some that would say, and you mentioned, exec you mentioned executive group, uh, yeah. there are some that would say that the UKIP structure of management with a yeah. national executive committee yeah. of people elected virtually at random. I remember, I think it was two yeah. years ago, yeah. there were 93 candidates for six places. Yeah. And you've got a membership voting on people they've yeah. never met, they've yeah. never heard of. I mean, you might yeah. as well play pin my tail on the donkey, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. And yet these are the people who make the big executive decisions in UKIP. Mm -hmm. is, is, Henry, is Henry possibly right when he says that at the EGM, he'll present the party with a new constitution and a new management structure. Well, he can do all of that, but I don't know if he's got any mandate, and people will say, yeah, that's a great idea. We all know. We, we, you know, when it's not rocket science to work it out. You know, we can have regional representation. Great. People you know in your region, you can vote for them. You know who these people are. And let's have a board, a management board, that can run the business of the party. Of course. That's a bit of a no-brainer. Well, we don't have that, but maybe we could have that. But, you know, seriously, I don't think Henry now can deliver that. I wish he could. I wish he'd really been a little bit stronger about this to start with. But mm. I recall a conversation where he said, no, 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 I'm converting the NEC. Well, this has not been a very good conversion, has it? No, and Margot, you know, do you now oppose the idea of the party having an extraordinary general meeting to discuss not just Henry, but these broader issues about party management? No, I don't oppose it, because I think anything that brings people together where they might at least be able to say okay. what they think. He set this, he set this hair running. Yep. Um, I don't know that people will, you know, accept, uh, oh, well, it's not happening now. So I don't know, maybe it buys Henry time. Maybe next week he decides all oh, this is all too much. I really don't know. No, but anyway, you're what not what changing your think. mind. Do you think Henry needs to go and we have to have a leadership election? Well, we have to have something. We cannot be in this okay. uh, la-la land. We OK. Can't. Margot Parker, former deputy leader of UKIP. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I've now got a former leader of UKIP on the phone, Diane James. Uh, she's in Belgium at the moment, in Brussels. Uh, Diane, good evening. Hello, have we got Diane hello. James? Yes, Nigel, hello. Yes, Diane, Nigel. hello, hi there. Now, Diane, you um, somewhat infamously led the party for a short period of time. Are yes. there, in your view, uh, you know, and I'll come to your view of Henry, but let's just talk about the party for one second here. Yep. In your view, are his criticisms of the National Executive Committee and the party structure the right ones? They are absolutely right, and they are absolutely valid. And the one aspect that Henry and I both share is that during our own leadership campaigns, we campaigned on platforms such as an update of the Constitution to change the party infrastructure, principally the NEC composition, its structure and its remit, to introduce new elements such as the management body, to have a really good financial overview and scrutiny, 
and to look at appointing the right people into the right places within the party structure, be it spokespersons or uh, individuals holding uh, particular areas. Now, I stood down after my short period because everything I campaigned for, I was blocked in actually completing, undertaking and introducing. And I decided that my personal credibility would not stand for that. Where I give Henry some, some real credit here, he's picked up exactly what the issues are. Yes, it's taking him time to actually uh, uh, implement the changes. But I can tell you from my experience, it's not something you can do overnight. And if he is able to go to the party membership in a few weeks' time via an EGM and outline, and I think he would do it honestly and openly, the problems he's come up against, what he believes the resolutions are, then I think it's worthy that the membership has the opportunity to listen to what he's got to say. And I think they might well buy into what he's actually got Mm. to promote. So, Diane, do you support Henry as leader? Yes, I do. And that might shock you. I don't support what's happened in his private life. Let me be absolutely clear. You know, I don't like that at all. But I'm prepared to put that to one side on the basis that he's already said quite categorically, that's my private life. Leave me to sort that out. He's shown, I believe, in the few months that he's been around, that he's prepared to focus on the job. He's gone about it quietly. He's done about, gone about it diligently. But I believe he's got results in the train which he's prepared to unveil and show. But if the party membership allows the opposition to derail, to destabilise him, much as they've done with me, with Paul Nuttall, with a whole host of other people, then all they will deliver is the opposition's objective of killing UKIP and and potentially killing Brexit as well. Can Henry Bolton given the number of public figures in UKIP that are against him now, can Henry Bolton, in your view, win that EGM? Yes, I believe he can, because if he can take, and I'll I'll risk repeating myself... Yeah, that's important. Yeah, but if he can take to the membership at that EGM the conviction and the convincing evidence that he's, he knows what the problems are, he's got resolutions which he believes he can implement and which will actually get the party out of the, the really sterile, quite frankly, environment it's in. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't run a modern political party with a constitution that's effectively two decades old. You don't run it with an NEC formulated in the way it is, composed in the way it is. You know, with the UKIP... And I'm, you know, I'm no longer a member. I'm merely an observer. I'm watching with huge sadness what's going on. But, you know, if I compare it with the Labour Party's NEC, which is now being taken over by Momentum, all that will happen if, if Henry is unable to change the NEC is that you will see the same old stuff going on and ever on into the future. Yeah. And quite frankly, UKIP will then die. Diane James, thank you very much indeed. Well, that was Diane James, who had a short period as leader and says Henry's analysis is right. To date, I've done my absolute best to say nothing on the Henry Bolton affair and this crisis. But in a minute, in a moment, I'll tell you exactly what I think about the events of the last 24 hours. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.30 and time for the news with Thomas Watts. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 So we've heard from Henry Bolton, UKIP's leader. We've heard from his resigning deputy, Margot Parker. What do I think? Was Henry right? in the face of the National Executive Committee decision yesterday to stay on as leader and to push this to an EGM. I think there are things that Henry has done over the course of the last few weeks that have not been very wise, and particularly the way that he's handled the media. And if you tell everybody you've broken up a relationship as a result of racist tweets and are then photographed at a smart London club holding hands and you go home by train together, that really is pretty stupid. And that, I think... It was that incident more than anything else that made people lose confidence in him. But am I pleased that he's ignoring the NEC and going to push this to an extraordinary general meeting? Yes, I am. I'm very, very pleased indeed. And I'll tell you why. I, in 2015 and 2016, wanted to call an extraordinary general meeting to change UKIP's constitution, to take power away from a very small group of people elected virtually at random who are not qualified to make big political decisions. You know, I saw things such as uh, the disgraced 
former Tory MP Neil Hamilton, you know, worm his way into the NEC and get put to the top of the list in Wales. He's now in the Welsh Assembly. I felt that was the wrong thing to do. Neil Hamilton's great fun to be with socially, but I think actually political death. Uh, And now he leads UKIP in the Welsh Assembly, having the lowest approval ratings of any party leader anywhere in the world, I think, in history. But that's what an NEC does. A leader of UKIP needs to be able to lead, to make those big decisions and ultimately to be judged by them. This EGM, this issue now, is not about Henry Bolton. It's actually bigger than that. It's about can UKIP reform, put a professional structure in place. If UKIP doesn't reform, it will die. I am pleased that this EGM is happening. I will wait to see whether Henry can produce a constitution and a new way of running things that would make UKIP more effective. I am not saying at this moment, that I will go to this EGM and support him. But I am saying I'm pleased we're having a debate. If UKIP doesn't change, it will not exist in 18 months' time. So, over to you. Was Henry right to stay on? Let me know your opinion. Call 0345 6060 973. You can text to 84850. You can tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. You can watch us, of course, on Facebook and comment there too. Let's go to John in Glasgow. Good evening, John. Nigel, what this uh, I'd point out to listeners, this reminds me of is the Labour leadership Jeremy Corbyn debacle. Well. Um, leaving, <laughs> aside, leaving aside any jokes about any physical resemblance here, um, <laughs> they spent two years they spent two years trying to get rid of him. Between 2015 and the last general election, the NEC were against him. Yes. The whole of the media were against him. Yes. The only paper supporting was probably Pravda. Uh, uh, they, had, they had tactical resignations from the shadow cabinet to squeeze well, them out. John, just it, quickly, it, just quickly, it, 21 members of Corbyn's shadow cabinet resigned in the space of a week in 2016. You're absolutely right. Precisely. And, and, all of, and he was a loser right up until the day after the general election in June. And all of a sudden, he's the hero. Uh, so none of this is uh, this is this is almost uh, very very similar. Uh, leaving aside Henry Bolton's personal life, I don't give a whit two hoots about pe- Henry Bolton's personal life unless he's actually done something criminal. Uh, I mean, it's 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 guilt by association. It's the same media frenzy. Uh, and at the end of the day, if we're going to get down the road where people are going to get uh, get get basically flung out of their jobs by guilt of a, guilt by association, that in itself is a bad thing. He's shown his pluck. I mean, I'm, I'm actually surprised he's still there, to be honest, because anybody else, I think, would have probably bowed out and thought, well, I'm just flinging in the towel, which is the easy option. I am, I am impressed by that, I have to say. And he deserves to get heard, and he deserves his 30 days to make his case to his membership and the rest of the public, because, frankly, uh, leaving aside any stupid things... I mean, if anybody's going to brush up, up, up against a girl at the next Christmas party, you need to check out her tweets. I mean, it's um, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, uh, John, you know, I think, um, <laughs> of course... Uh, uh, he perhaps uh, wasn't to know that she sent out these messages in his defence. I think the problem, John, is when he said he'd broken off the relationship and yet it pretty much appeared to me that he hadn't. Uh, that, I think, is when he got into real trouble. And that's when the media circus went into absolute full freeding frenzy. We even had, and it, and it was cringe-making, him showing times of taxi receipts to prove uh, that nothing particularly carnal had happened in that space of time. And I thought, you know, that's where it all gets a little bit embarrassing. But, John... Well, we'll just- They'll just do the next thing to the same leader. I mean, uh, you know, if there's some justice... Yeah, yeah, they may well do. John, you've met, listen, John, you've made a fantastic point, because I think the point that Corbyn won with his party is a good one. I don't know, folks, whether Henry Bolton can win or lose at this EGM. I'm just pleased we're talking about bringing UKIP into an era where it can be governed, where a leader can actually lead. Do you know, I gave up with it in the end. My last year as UKIP leader, I, I virtually acted as an independent. I just couldn't be... I, I didn't even attend half the NEC meetings. I mean, they last six hours. Life's too short. Peter in Eastbourne's impressed. He says, Nigel, I'm going to join UKIP and back Henry, a man of principle. However, Darren says, I was a member for several years and I've just left because of the latest embarrassment. By the way, the NEC is a joke. Yeah, well, I think a lot of us agree on that. So, so even, I mean, wouldn't it be interesting? Henry could lose this EGM, not be UKIP leader, but actually have made the argument for making the party governable, and that is what I want to see. Jim is calling me from Chipping Norton in Oxfordshire. Jim, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. I, we've spoken before. I think I speak with a little bit of authority on this. I'm uh, a branch chairman and also a county organiser. Yes. Um, and I have a 
small kitchen cabinet, if you wish, where I'd, I'd draw um, opinion from. My big problem with Henry Bolton, and I supported him in his leadership bid, yep. is that in August, September, when the election was on, there was a big thing made about the stability of his marriage, and he's a, a family man and, and everything else. I looked ex- extensively for skeletons in the cupboard, couldn't find any, uh, and there were, it, with the other uh, candidates, there were various questionable things that had gone on, and I thought I was getting somebody with a good chance of, of, of making it. Now, within three months, marriage doesn't break up to the extent that his does. Not if, there, not if it was strong, stable, or whatever you want to call it. So my particular point is that he has broken faith with the people who voted him in by mm. so, basically so, lying to us about his marital status. So, so, so Jim, 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 are you saying, Jim, are you saying that at the hustings, which took place around the country to select the leader, that he made a big point about being a happily married man? Yes, he did. OK. No, no, well, that's a... Listen, that yeah. is, Jim, so that is a... To me, that's... that's a breach of trust and you you know i'm going to find it extremely difficult if he wins at the egm Mm. to maintain my position and i was appointed a county organizer under his watch yeah to maintain that position i've been trying very hard to keep things on the down low here in and around chipping norton area uh and the county um saying you know let things play out and everything else yes the, the the nec needs reform and everything else but he is currently working under the current NEC rules. He hasn't changed them yet. No, he hasn't, Jim, but could. Could. And, Jim, you may well come along to that EGM, and I'm sure you will, given how active in the party you are. You may well come along to that EGM and vote against Henry Bolton and say he's got to go. But if he's able to produce a system where the thing could become governable and where we can get some better judgment, he might just do it a bit of good in the end, mightn't he? He may. He may. Yes, I, I can, you know... The, the NEC needs re- needs reform. We all know that. We've known it for years. But he's shot himself completely in the foot because he's, in my opinion, and I'm the opinion of my little kitchen cabinet, yep. he's broken face with the party No, membership. OK, Jim, you've made that point very, very strongly and very clearly, and Henry going to have a real problem turning around people like Jim. A real, real problem. In fact, I'm convinced if the EGM was tomorrow, he would lose it quite heavily. But... But he's appealing now directly to the members over the tops of the NEC and others. Corbyn did it. Can Bolton. Cathy is calling from Southampton. Good evening, Cathy. Oh, good evening, Nigel. Um, I'm a second-time caller, actually. Welcome again. Um, And um, I went to a meeting, actually, at the beginning of December. Mm -hmm. And um, I met Henry Bolton, and he seemed a very nice person. And I thought, oh, great. You've actually got a leader now that's actually going to take UKIP forward. Um, he seemed very positive and everything. And then um, after Christmas, I, I went out and I looked at the um, daily papers and headlines. You know, Henry Bolton um, met this girl, um, have, you know, had, an, um, had a relationship with yep. this young girl. And um, to be honest, it completely threw me. And um, I was really disappointed and lost a lot of faith in him. Because I believe that if you're going to be a leader of any party, the first thing you've got to show is you've got to have some respect, and people got to respect you. And he says it's his private life. Well, if it's his private life, he shouldn't... Well, I don't say you made it public, but his girlfriend obviously did. So obviously looking for publicity, to be honest. Um, whether it's bad or good, she was obviously looking for publicity, in my view. And um, it's, it's actually um, taken away all credibility. Cathy, has, uh, he, has, he, has he, I mean, are you saying he's turned it into a bit of a laughing stock? I think he has, yes, I do. Um, it's, it's such a shame because I think that he showed weakness by having an affair because, you know, the thing is, he's got two young children and in mm. my opinion, I mean, I don't know nothing about his private life, obviously, uh, that side of it, but, I mean, this other thing, thing's been made public with the young girl, but with his wife, he's got two young children and to me, he should be making his marriage work. Well, well Cathy, it's, I, I mean, I, take, I hear what you say, but it's not for us to judge other people's relationships, and he hasn't actually broken the law or anything like that, but Cathy, you disapprove, and you're not alone in your disapproval. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's 7.45. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. 
It's the big media story. It's Henry Bolton. It's the 25-year-old with whom he's had the affair. It's her racist tweets. It's the NEC unanimously saying he must stand down as party leader. He's refusing and taking it to an extraordinary general meeting of the party. And on the line, someone who's just called in, is Paul Oakley. He's a national executive member of UKIP and he's the general secretary of UKIP. So, Paul, good evening. Good evening, Nigel. How how are you? I'm well. So you were one of those who unanimously voted to say that he should stand down as leader. Can you explain to us, what has he done wrong? Uh, Well, uh, like you, I'm I'm not particularly interested in his personal life. Uh, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone and all that. Uh Um, But we actually, well, yeah, none of us are perfect. But we'd actually had a meeting about 10 days previously, and there were five, possibly six of us on the NEC, including myself, who were balancing his personal issues against the threat to the party if there was another leadership election. So we were sympathetic to his cause. In the intervening 10 days, he entirely lost us because his handling of the media was absolutely atrocious. A party leader ought to be talking about Brexit when Theresa May is going to betray it. Every single interview that he had was about his personal relationship. And he's also, I'm I'm sorry, he's he's come out with a couple of porkies about this meeting yesterday. He said that the only thing that was raised against him was that he said that that he was leaving his wife. That's absolutely not not the case. Uh, For a start, he came up with a bizarre conspiracy theory that uh, a woman, who who you know, I'll tell you who it is privately, had been uh, contacting all the NEC members to turn us against him. It was absolute nonsense. I haven't heard from well, this woman in well, months. Well, Paul, you know, when people are in a corner, they look for all, all sorts of reasons as to why they're in trouble. But, but, so you feel that he's handled the media very badly? Very badly. And do you think, Paul, in your opinion, as UKIP's General Secretary, do you feel that he's brought the party into disrepute? Uh, p- personally, no. Um, but that, that doesn't really matter. I mean, w- you and I have had discussions in the past about reforming the NEC. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, my dog's on my lap. Now, the last uh, time we, we had dogs, to... Paul, the last time we had dogs um, barking on the show were a group of Alsatians from the American Secret Service uh, when I was at the CPAC conference last year. And in fact, if you go to lbc.co.uk, you can see me being sort of ushered out at the point of a gun. Uh, so, presumably, it's a bit quieter now. Paul. It is a bit quieter now. Paul, Paul I mean, we will go, Paul, now. We will go now to an EG. Um, and if you're right about his ability to deal with these issues, he will lose at that EGM. But, you know, the comparisons with Jeremy Corbyn and the top of the party and the grassroots are interesting. Is it now the time, Paul Oakley, to accept that a voluntary NEC that binds a leader... You know how frustrated I was. I couldn't do anything I wanted to do. Yeah. I wanted to modernise the it. party. I wanted to have e-voting. I wanted UKIP to be like the five-star movement is in Italy. You know, a modern party. Absolutely. And I was stopped from doing any of it. Could there, could there, Paul Oakley, could there be something good that comes out of this EGM if we start to have a proper debate about UKIP's management? Uh, no, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't bode well for Henry that he hasn't even read the Constitution, because if an EGM is called in a leader, that is the only issue which is going to be on the agenda. Yes. He obviously hasn't read the Constitution. Now, he, if he was going to do this seriously, I'd have backed him in this. Yeah. He should have done it four months previously. He's done nothing at all apart from get on Russia today with that badger strangling quote. The branches were moaning about the inactivity from the leader before then, Uh, He is not going to be able to produce a fully, properly worded constitution in four weeks anyway. In fact, I I actually wonder who's going to produce it for him, because so many people have have left the party in the the last few days. It just can't be done. Mm. OK, and Paul, you know, listen, if he turns up at at that EGM and he hasn't produced a new constitution and a new plan, he is toast. But he said today... Anyway, Nigel, and and I'll I'll, I'll tell you one other thing. Yep. Um, I kept my views entirely neutral. I didn't tell the members what I thought before the EGM yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I was getting emails left, right and centre from members who didn't know which side of the divide I was on. Yep. I did have some in support of Henry. There was six that I've counted. I've just been trying to run through my inbox just now. Mm. I've lost count at over 200 people calling for him to go right away. Otherwise, they were going to resign their membership, not campaign for the party. And I'm appalled. I'm not so bothered about the, the front bench people. But when chaps like John Tennant, who I know you know well, and all of his uh, fellow activists in the North East give up the ghost because of Henry Bolton. You know that this guy is doing badly. There is a lot. it's outrageous that he's come out today and said this. The problem is his. He should go. It really is simple well, as that. Well, Paul, I, for no, I don't for one moment uh, doubt a lot of damage has been done over the course of the last two, three weeks to UKIP's reputation, to his reputation. Paul, I thank you very much for some very, very strong views there from the General Secretary of UKIP um, saying that actually Henry's account was not wholly accurate of what happened yesterday. I think he's right to stay. Good for him. It wasn't him who said it, I get via text, referring, of course, to the tweets that Joe Marnie, his girlfriend, or ex-girlfriend, we don't quite know the answer to that put out um i also on twitter get henry must stay to lead ukip but he must distance himself from joe marnie that's what peter thinks um why does any of this matter ukip is an irrelevant party uh, which will, will be nothing more than a tiny stain in britain's history sorry matey whoever sent that in it actually will be seen as being the catalyst for quite a big political revolution josh is a new caller from wakefield good evening josh Hi, Nigel. I'm Should... just ringing up to, to yeah. say, basically, I never backed Henry on the start. And I, I was always told of the Tinfo Hatton because I was always saying he's a plan, he's a plan from the establishment because the day he was elected, and I've said this to so many members, the day he was elected was the day UKIP's anti-establishment message died. And that's because they don't give OBs to people that fight against the establishment. They're just not going to do it. And, and now, I've, now I've said that, everyone's like, you were right, you were right, he's a plan. Well, I, I, he was a former Liberal Democrat candidate, of course, yes. um, and he stood for the Lib Dems back in 2005. So some would say that's an unusual journey from the Lib Dems to UKIP. Um, mm -hmm. So so you feel, under him, we've lost our hard edge, do you? Well, I was chairman and well, I was branch secretary before of the Normans Party of Captain Castleford constituency, which is a Rex Cooper seat. And yep. I was a campaign manager in the 2017 election. And our the chairman before me resigned for the Conservatives. Um, he's a great guy, by the by. Um, and I took on that, and I ended up resigning from that position when Henry Bottle was elected, and the branch folded, because there was no one else that was in the um, the local party that wanted to stand for the positions under Bolton. So it was handed over to the Wakefield constituency. So the, the numbers weren't great anyway, and I'm, I'm not renewing my membership in right. March, okay. Henry Bolton is to the leader. OK, Josh, strong feelings. And my last caller tonight, another new caller to the show, is Steve from Shaftesbury in Dorset. Good evening, Steve. Hello there. So, should he stay or should he go, Steve? Oh, he definitely has to go. OK. Um, and I don't think it's to do with uh, his private life or even reforming the NEC. Uh, that's only come out uh, now the NEC have voted no confidence, no confidence in him. So, uh, of course, he's going to say reform the NEC because he's using the old adage of the best form of defence is attack. Mm -hmm. However, my problem with him is the lack of uh, integrity and the dishonesty. Uh, it's already been mentioned on your show that um, uh, he will, will, will said up several of the hustings he played on his stable relationship with his uh, wife and children. One of his daughters had been born on a train only a couple of years ago. Um, but... Uh, we all had, all members of UKIP had an email yep. uh, on the 4th of January uh, warning us that there was about to be an article in The Sun. Well, that morning, um, Henry Bolton was being interviewed on LBC by Nick Ferrari, and I yep. happened to listen to that. And uh, in, in it, uh, during the interview, uh, Nick Ferrari just asked, uh, uh, before the story had come out, mm -hmm. Who is Joe Marnie then, one of your colleagues? And Henry Bolton said, yes, yes. Now, in the email he sent the same day mm. uh, to right. every single member of UKIP, 
he said that anyone who follows his social media account will know he's had a change in relationships. That, that state. Well, he did, he did put the picture out on Twitter, but Steve, you think he's been less than frank. There are others who think he's been less than frank. Bob says to me on Facebook, will you admit you were wrong to back Henry? Publicly, Bob, I didn't back Henry. I didn't back anybody. But he was the most qualified person for that job. And yes, I did vote for him. And I've been disappointed by many of the things that have happened over the last few months. A lack of proper communication with the members. And that's disappointed me. But I think think he is right to push this to an EGM because big issues about UKIP's management will get discussed. Unless it, the less they reform the coven, governance of UKIP, it won't even exist in 18 months' time. I know that as a former leader. And I'm not saying I back him, but I back the EGM process and this debate because we absolutely have to have it. And if we're frustrated by Brexit, UKIP will have a big role, once again, in British politics. That's the end of the Nigel Farage show for today. I'm back tomorrow night at 7, coming up at 10 tonight. It's Ian Collins, but up next, it's Clive Bull. Nigel, thank you. And we're going to continue this conversation with UKIP in turmoil, mass resignations, no confidence in...